The big question is this, how does an overweight introvert that was raised in a drug house become a successful entrepreneur and dominate the real estate conversation online? One relationship at a time. You were listening to The Mighty Mike Show. What's up, you guys? Welcome to another episode, episode number eight of the Mighty Agent series for The Mighty Mike Show. Guys, I am so excited about this series because essentially what I'm doing is I'm I'm taking a walk through when I first started thinking about entrepreneurship. For example, when I first started like my first business back in 2013, serving legal documents, it was like a very special time for me because it was like, okay, you know, I had been following Ty Lopez and a couple other guys that were like very, you know, influential. They were talking about this different lifestyle and what you could do with your life and stuff. And Ty, uh, well, I look back at him now and how much success he's had. When I first started following him, he basically had a nightclub. He's down in Los Angeles and it was successful. And someone told him, hey, you should start doing social media. So he literally, he, he was pretty wealthy already, right? But he went and took and his money and went and leased a Lamborghini and a Ferrari. And then he leased this million dollar mansion for a whole year, spent a million bucks to rent this mansion for a year. He said, for one year, I'm just gonna do social media like crazy and blow up and he did it and he freaking blew it up and he had the ladies, you know, the girls. I had just, I was just going through a divorce at the time. And uh, and he, he had the ladies, these girls around him and all this stuff and, and success and this mansion. And he was interviewing these multiple millionaire people inside his mansion, right? And I was just like, wow, like that's what I want. And so my, my goals have kind of changed over time as I've realized that some of that stuff is kind of like not, it's not really what I want for my life. Like, of course, those things are nice to haves. But the, for my value system, they didn't, they weren't something that like really aligned with me. Like I would be like a kid in a candy shop if I were him. I couldn't focus. I wouldn't be able to do what I do now, right? And so you got to figure out what works for you. But the concept is still the same. He gave me a vision for what was possible, right? And he actually broke it down. He said, any goal you want to achieve, no matter how big or how small it is, you just have to break it down into chunks, Right. So if you want to make a million dollars, how much is that per day? He broke it down to like two. You could just divide 365, right? Divide a million dollars by 365. It's like 2,800 something, something like that. So I just said $3,000 a day with taxes and some other things you're going to have to pay. Right. So I just upped it to like $3,000 a day. That's how much I need to make. Right. And so, um, you know, what's crazy is there's been days where I've made 5,000, there's been days where I've made 7,000, 10,000, and then there's days where I make nothing. So what he's saying is that you got to figure out a system that can consistently make at least $3,000 a day and you're going to make, you know, you're going to make a million dollars a year. So break it into chunks. If you want to lose 100 pounds, right, there's 50, there's 50 weeks in a year, okay, if you were to break it down and say, hey, I'm going to lose two pounds a week, right? Two times 50, that's 100. Some people, they get they way overestimate what they can accomplish in just a couple months, but they underestimate what they can accomplish in a year or in five years. So just break down whatever it is you're trying to accomplish into little chunks and then set goals. Okay, once you feel like you have all of your goals set, like your personal, your business, and all this stuff, the road to the road to a million is the way I like to think about it. And for me, like I told you, the daily amount, right? But then I started thinking like, why? I, I, next level thinking is, why are you breaking it up into a year? This is next level thinking. If you really start to think about this, this is really next level thinking. Why break it up into a year span? Why can't you accomplish this in 90 days? Why can't you accomplish this in six months? Whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, don't try to like put it into a year. Once you start achieving some success, you should break it up and uh, don't base it on a certain amount of time because time is the one thing that you can't get back. Base it on the, the, the things that you have to do, the actions that you have to take 
and and what is the result of that one action for example just to really bring it home for example if i were to let's say i were to close three ambassador deals as a power consultant and i wasn't a consultant i was just an amba i was just an ambassador like i referred them to another consultant a thousand dollars a piece right so if i got one person it equals a thousand bucks right so if i if i could get one person and then I, uh, for a thousand dollars i need to get a thousand people to make a million bucks okay so now instead of basing it on time, I base it on the efforts that are required in order to get what it is I'm trying to get. So let's say you wanted to go, this is really crazy once you get this. Let's say I want to go buy a new Harley. I bought this Harley Davidson, right? If I want to go buy a new Harley and it's a $32,000 bike, mine had upgrades and stuff, so it was more. But let's say it was thirty grand. If I want to go buy a $30,000 bike, $32,000 let's say, um, I need to go sell, I need to just go refer 32 people to get solar. This is just an example with the solar, right? But whatever it is, 32 people. Now my problem is very small, right? My problem is very small. You telling me you can't meet 32 people in the next four or five months? Like, you know, make a goal, figure out how you're going to achieve the goal and then just go do it. So now, boom, you pay the thing off in cash. Now here's where things get really interesting. Instead of buying something like a Harley, okay, you take that 32 grand, those 30 some people you met in the first few months, and you go apply it to something that will make you money. Put $30,000 on a rental property, right? Uh, 30, 30,000 will buy you, what will it buy you? One for so it'll buy you basically like one hundred fifty thousand dollars, around one hundred fifty thousand dollars in real estate. So it, with thirty thousand, you can control one hundred fifty thousand dollars in real estate. Boom! You buy the property, okay? You go, you buy the property. Maybe you got a little fix some stuff up, you know, have a little extra money to fix some stuff up, and then uh, rent it out. Now you have some cash flow coming in. Or maybe you flip the property. You see what I'm saying? Like there's so many different ways to look at this, but the road to a million dollars is not clocking in, clocking out, saving money. No, the road to a million bucks is figuring out what actions I can take that will get me there the fastest, not what do I have to do every month in order to get there. Does that make sense? So when I first started, I, I, I thought of things of like uh, based on time. So I just need to make $3,000 a day. True, that would work, but what you need to think about it instead, that next level thinking is what can I do? Now here's the, the next level, right? That next level of thinking. So being an ambassador, I make $1,000. How can I make more than $1,000 per person? Now things start to get interesting, right? So as a consultant, someone who has to meet with someone on Zoom, Right. Instead of just having me referring things to consultants and as an ambassador, as a referral partner, if I'm a consultant, now I'm getting seven thousand dollars per per solar deal. Right. So or, this could be real estate transactions. This could be mortgage uh, closings. It could be whatever. But just do the math with me. OK, the more money you get per contact and per effort to put in the better now what we'll get to it in a second but you you know eventually it's zero efforts and money's coming in that's the goal right but in the beginning you got to move from maybe getting paid for your time for efforts equal time this is why salespeople are the highest paid people in the world and anyone who's built a huge company you ask them and they've done sales before because they've learned that the, this whole model right so now let's say I'm getting $7,000. I need a calculator. <laughs> if I'm getting $7,000 from a solar installation, let's say, all I do is meet with them on Zoom. I make sure that their home is appropriate for solar. They, um, they got, someone else goes and installs it because of the, the power platform. And then now I'm getting $7,000 for an hour's worth of my time on Zoom. How many Zoom meetings can I do, right? <laughs> So now it becomes an issue of how many, how, what do I have to do to book 
a Zoom appointment Monday through Friday. Now, how many of those Zoom appointments actually get installed? So maybe you got to do some averages and figure it out. But if, if you really think about it, if you did two, if you did two or three Zoom appointments a day, you did them five days a week. You just worked in the morning, let's say, right? And you did this five days a week, guys. You're getting, you know, you're closing seven, seven times probably. Let's just say only half of them. So three times five, fifteen. Let's say only half of them. Seven times seven is forty-nine. That's forty-nine thousand dollars a week. Let's just round it up to fifty thousand a week. Now things start to get interesting. That's over two million dollars a year. So you don't have to be a freaking rocket scientist or some kind of engineer to figure this out, right? You you just have to be really good at something for your first business, put in the effort, and it, it will have this exponential effect as you realize what pays you the most for the least amount of your time. And then what happens is you turn around and say, okay, I got all this money. I'm not going to quit doing this. But maybe I can hire somebody, teach them what I'm doing. So now I'm not getting two or three appointments a day. I'm getting five or six appointments a day, right? Because my partner here, and I'm paying them very well because I'm already making money. I'm paying them very well just to be a closer. I'm paying them 50000 a year, <laughs> plus like maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in, uh, in uh, bonuses or something, right? So they're an employee, and then I'm cashing from them 50000 a week. You see what I'm saying? And then now you bring on another person. As long as you're okay and you can manage those two people, you know, now you're making 150000 a week, right? I know people are like, Mike, just stop. This is stupid. No, this is reality. The, the, sometimes, sometimes you just have to, you have, not sometimes, all the time. Everyone has been given limiting beliefs from their childhood whether your parents weren't good with money or whether people always talk down to you or whatever it was but like we all have some kind of limiting limiting beliefs in us and we just have to get, break through them right make it a numbers game make it more a logical thing and listen if you don't have the skills uh that you just you just aren't able to maybe you're like well mike how am i supposed to find those people Done. That's easy. That's a, that's something where you just not what, but who, okay? How, who is going to help you learn how to find people to get on a Zoom call? Okay, the next question. How do I actually close somebody on a Zoom call? Uh, no, not how. Who? Who is going to teach you how to close somebody on a Zoom call? You know, how am I going to pay my taxes and make sure that you know, my money's going the right places. Not how. Who? Who is going to control that and make sure that everything is accounted for, taxes are paid, employees' benefits are all accounted for, and nobody's screwing you over, right? It's who. It's always who. So I'm telling you, a lot of the who's in the case of the scenario I just told you is me. I'm going to help you. I'm, I'll give you the leads, a list of people to contact, uh, uh, realtors and homeowners, and then I'll give you a list of uh, different ways to discuss with people and role play with you on how to actually close people on a solar appointment. The same thing goes for real estate. That's why I'm creating a course. You know, the Mighty Agent Academy, you can go to Mighty Agent Community right now. And there's a, there's a page up, but I'm still building everything. MightyAgentCommunity.com. You can go check it out. I'm going to have all the resources you need in order to do what I'm talking about. You know, if you're a real estate agent, you could close a deal... You know, if you were to close one deal, you're going to get five to ten thousand dollars, assuming you're not being gouged by a team, right? Uh, you know, or a brokerage that just takes all your money, right? So, okay, so next level thinking to wrap this up, we're making let's just go to the lower amount, we're making forty, fifty thousand dollars a week because it still sounds crazy to some people, I know, but forty to fifty thousand dollars a week because. We're getting um, we're getting fifteen appointments a week, right? And only half of them are closing. It's only seven. We're going to low number seven is closing. So out of those seven, we're getting seven thousand dollars each because it's a consultant for solar, and they're getting installed. So that's forty nine thousand dollars. Seven times seven is forty nine. Forty nine thousand dollars a week. Okay, could you live on that? 
That's what I want you to think about. But I don't want you to stop there. I want you to take that $49,000 and, and come with me and my other investors who are sitting on millions and let's invest in apartments, right? There's a whole nother business for apartment investing and these people are no joke. I could throw, I could name drop people that you would know that are on our investment team. I'm not going to just cause I don't, I don't want to be that guy, but you know, if you just, once you start to, once you have money and you're ready to start investing, there are deals out there where you could get eight to 12% return dividend checks on your, on your investment. So you take that money, you put it in apartments. And as you keep investing in apartment buildings, what's going to happen is you're going to start earning more from your dividend checks, right? Then you're earning from doing this doing whatever it is you're doing, whether it's mortgages, real estate, insurance. I don't talk a lot about that, but insurance is another great business for what we're talking about here. The reason why I like solar so much, you guys, is because it has a tailwind. You can look up a video by Alex Harmozy. He talks about, I forget what it's like, something how to make a million, hundred million dollars or build a hundred million dollar business or something like that. And there are four elements. And, <clears throat> you know, one of the elements is like that there's a need is it like a product market fit, meaning the market wants what you're selling, right? That you have some kind of skill that helps you, you know, that you've learned something that helps you be successful in that. You've built a team. And the last one is that there's a tailwind, meaning there's not like a headwind where you, as soon as you get into that industry, people are beating down on you. Like the mortgage industry right now, if you're a new mortgage loan officer, like you can still get business in any of these industries, but because the interest rates are going up, there's less people who want to refinance. There's less people who want to get new deals, right? So what you do is you get into something that has a tailwind that's pushing you forward and solar is that. And the reason why is because the, the state governments will pay, they have huge incentives for people to get solar for free like free no no uh nothing down installation where it lowers their their monthly uh power bill like you are helping these people right so that tailwind of people who are raising their hands when you get on those zoom calls you're probably not going to close seven you're probably going to close 10 or 11 out of 15 but i'm just being conservative with, with closing less than half right so when you have a tailwind like that it's going to make it so much easier what alex was saying is like it you know, don't get into an industry where you have to fight and claw and scratch to be able to to succeed. You know, with real estate, however, I know it's going to come back up because it goes like this. So I would never stop doing real estate as an agent or as an investor because there's always going to be opportunities, first of all, for referrals and stuff like that. Because people are still buying and closing. Like Ricky says, they're still closing every day, which isn't true. It's only during the weekdays, right? <laughs> okay. But <clears throat> there's a closing every day, all the time, there's the closings happening. No matter if you're in the freaking Great Depression, there's still a closing happening because someone died or someone got divorced or whatever, the house had to sell. There's always closings happening. So, you know, you don't want to just abandon an industry that you've invested time and money into. But something like solar, what's another example? Um... <clears throat> Another example could be like, I'm here in the country, here in New Mexico in the mountains. There's some Mexican food, but there's no Venezuelan food like arepas. If you were to do something like that and bring something that no one has or uh, has experienced, everyone in the town will at least come one time if your marketing is on point. So it's going to have a tailwind. And there also, there's not any restaurants here. There's very little restaurants here. So... There's like a, a need and a desire for another restaurant. So I've thought many times about opening something here in this mountain town. Uh, there's not a whole lot of people, but there's enough. There's enough, right? So there would be a tailwind. So with that being said, solar actually has not just a tailwind, but a demand. You know, these guys who are uh, these big market money managers, they're doing... Um, uh, surveys and they're constantly trying to figure out where to put their money and uh, they did a survey that talked about uh, taking taking their money and putting it into uh, solar whether they were going to do that instead of real estate and so they had a survey that said that it was going to go from three percent which is our market saturation right now 
It's going to go from 3% to like 45 to 47% in the United States. Other, some other state, I forget which state, what country it was, but it was like uh, Canada or some, some other countries where they have huge incentives for solar, they're already at like 50% solar rate where their usage and dependency on uh, the grid is only like half. Whereas the U United States is like 98%, 97% reliant on the grid, which is like this old system that was built 130 years ago where people get their power and they... There, our homes are all connected to it. And, it. and as far as I know, that's how it's always been. We don't need to change it. But when I learned about solar, it was like, wait a second. You can actually save money and not have to depend on all these substations and you pay on your bill for all these substations to be able to get the power to your house. And so if you look at your bill, if it goes up, it's often because one substation needed to upgrade something. So you're paying for these substations to upgrade their services so that they can actually handle the power transfer from one substation to another to get to your home. With solar, because we only have 3% saturation in the United States, if you're a solar consultant, somebody is going to be the person that brings that homeowner solar. If it's you, imagine that you were to take the entire United States from 3% to, to 40 or 50%, which is projected to be by next year, or by 2024, actually. If you're that person, okay, just take the general population, divide it by two, and times that by 7,000. Obviously, you're not going to be the person to bring everyone solar, okay? I'm just saying, like, there is such a need and such a product market fit and such a tailwind in the solar industry that it's it's um, one of the guys I work with says that it's, it's, he calls it an IQ test. You know, if you sit down with somebody and you explain to them that they're not only going to save money, but they're going to be able to take control of their power usage and they still say no, it's an IQ test. Just move on to the next person because this is not a, uh, this is a no brainer opportunity for homeowners to be able to take control of their power. So with that being said, however you decide to make your first million, However you decide to get there is absolutely 100% up to you. I mean, I don't want to get controversial, but there are other ways to make $1,000, right? There are other ways to make, you know, there's so many different ways. And that's as an entrepreneur, that's one of my biggest struggles. I get shiny object syndrome. So what I have done, this new method that I've done, and the reason why it's taken me so long to launch my solar division is because I want to sit here and look at all the different opportunities and is this the best one for me to put extra time into? Because time is the one thing you can never get back. So for me, I have taken my time. The guy George, my my friend George, um, I'm sorry, my friend Jacob has been reaching out to me and talking to me about it for the last like six, seven months. And he's and I'm like, I'm like George, I'm doing. So, I keep saying George because I see it right here on the screen. Um, Jacob, oh George, what's up, George? <laughs> So if you guys are listening to the podcast and this is on the audio version, you're listening to the replay, you can actually watch these episodes live on my Facebook page. And uh, I have this automation set up that just blasted everywhere. One of my companies, uh, Mighty Website Builder, uh, one of the services I offer is automation. So you can actually take a podcast, blast it all over the different podcast platforms repurpose it into video and have it automatically put on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, and that's what it is. So if you're watching this right now on Facebook, uh, uh, put me to the test, go check it out. Um, you know, go check it out on the different platforms. You will find it here later today automatically on the different platforms, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, what's up, George? Yeah, I'm super excited for um, anybody who's... Uh, first coming into the solar thing because it is such an opportunity and George and I are partnering up on it as well and uh, and uh, Jacob and I. And so a part of when you're doing business is not just what's going to make you the most money, but a part of it is who you're going to surround yourself with, you know, that's a big part of it. And so you learn that as you go through business and you learn the kind of people you don't want to work with. And then in that process, you're going to meet some people that just make you feel better about yourself better about life, better about the opportunities in life. And so, you know, surround yourself with people that light you up and that make you want to keep doing what it is that you're doing that makes you money. Because at the end of the day, we're all doing this for our family, 
for our, for for the future of our family, for our children, and and what you can do to what kind of value you can offer to the to their future. You know, like I imagine my grandkids, you know, my daughters, my sons having grandkids and coming over, and I want to be that grandpa that uh, you know was able to pay for them to go to Disney World every year. You know, that's those are the real whys that help you um, that help you achieve. You know, if you're just doing it to make money, there's this underlying, I don't want to call it sinful, but it's like a dirty feeling, you know? And so you really want to do this for a better reason than just money, okay? So yeah, definitely, George, good stuff. And uh, listen, guys, uh, definitely subscribe, uh, leave a review on the podcast if you're listening on audio. Um, Apple loves that, and they just share it with other other people, and because I'm in the business space, I got a lot of competition on podcasts. So um, definitely share it with a friend if you know somebody who's maybe lost. I wish, okay, and this is not like, you know, me bragging or whatever, but like I wish that I knew someone who was teaching what I'm teaching. Because the lessons I learned, if you go back to episode one, these are all the lessons I learned leading up to where I am today is what I'm sharing. And it took years, right? It took years for me to learn these things, these mindset concepts that once you get them, you are able to just skyrocket your success because you're not going to focus on things. You're not going to let your mind tell you, oh, you can't do that. You're not meant to do that. Like today, it was all about figuring out what the numbers are and getting over your limiting beliefs, right? Getting over your limiting beliefs, figuring out what the numbers are and what are the activities that you're going to do like who is the person that's going to help you know how to get through those activities? Who is the person that's going to take you to the next level? If it's not me, just figure out who it is in the industry that you're in, if that makes sense. So thank you guys so much. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Don't forget, go to Mighty Agent Community. It's not fully built out. So uh, if you do get there and it's fully built out and awesome, great. But that's going to be the community where I'm dropping tons of gems. I'm going to do screen shares. I'm going to have free courses in there. I started a free course for real estate agents um, all about built your first six days in the business. Because because uh, when I bring someone new onto my team and I'm trying to teach them how to do real estate, they uh, it's, it just takes so much time. So I'm going to send them their six days, put in the work, build your list. And uh, it's going to have a lot of value, I think. So. All right, you guys, take care. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Mighty Nation, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. I put my heart and soul into creating this show and specifically covering topics that I think are going to help you move the needle forward in your business and in your life and help you forge a future of fortune and abundance for you and your family and be able to go out there and just take action on all the wonderful things and dreams and hopes and things that you want to accomplish. Subscribe to the channel, leave a review, share this with a friend, and until next time, live mighty.